Hey, it's Norm from Tested. I'm outdoors today with Eric Cheng of DJI. Now, we've shown a bunch of DJI products before on the site, quad coppers, as I'm sure you guys know, but today we're looking at something a little different, a little less consumer facing, but kind of a natural progression for where these quad coppers are going to be in the next five to 10 years. Well, this month, basically. What do you have to show today, Eric? Yeah, so we're, we've actually kind of gone back to our roots and we have a developer platform kit, which is called the Matrix 100 or the M100. It's right here uh, in front of you. Um, and it's a 650 sized developer quadcopter that comes with um, a lot of different options for maximum flexibility and development. So fun fundamentally, it's made to work with our SDK. So you're gonna be coding against this platform, um, but it comes with modular batteries. So uh, up to two battery support, built-in light bridge, obviously a camera mount for the, the, the X3 camera that you saw released with the Inspire initially, um, and brand new, a new sense and avoid system called Guidance. Now this sounds like a really big deal. I know a lot of people have flown, for example, your Phantoms and even Inspire, Adam loves his, but the thing we're always afraid of is losing control of it or it you're hitting something that you don't see, you don't notice. Now with the Guidance system, you're talking about actual active avoidance of obstacles. How does that work? Right, so guidance, you, you can see right here on the front um, and on all sides and also on the bottom. So on the Inspire 1, we released Visual Positioning System, or VPS. So this was ultrasonic plus optical flow. So it had a single optical camera plus ultrasonic send and receive uh, sensors. Now you'll see here, we have uh, an upgraded ultrasonic system, so it's much more powerful. And we also have stereo cameras. So what guidance gives you is the ability to see, first of all, it tells you what objects are in front of it. It also gives you access to a depth map, stereo, mm. grayscale images, and also, of course, uh, ultrasonic information. It looks like you have five different of these uh, guidance optical systems on here. And with stereo, you know, two cameras, you're not only, like, for example, looking at the ground, we uh, used the analogy before, it was like a mouse, an optical mouse tracking the movement. But if you're flying a quadcopter against a wall or something and you're moving toward it, you're gonna need the dual cameras to kind of gauge the distance. Yeah, you, you pretty much, it's the, the combination of multiple sensors that makes this powerful. Okay. So ultrasonic gives you that discrete bounce, you know, a, a, an, an echo off of an object that's close by. And then the stereo cameras gives you basically 3D reconstruction of the area. So it's really meant for object avoidance, um, but it, it can keep, I mean, we've seen accuracy as much as, as uh, tight as, you know, one centimeter. Um, so th the sensors are, are pretty good. And we'll demo it a little bit later, but what you see is if you try to fly it into a person, for example, it, it will just stop. And if the, then you walk towards it, it will move away from you. So in the programming, you can set a radius, for example, and say that if it, the quadcopter thinks it gets within four or five feet of a person or any object, any moving object even, it will just resist and it won't even fly, even if you're pushing the throttle all the way. Right, so there's a sensitivity control. And again, this is just the way we have it configured here, which is to avoid objects. Um, but there's an open SDK in Guidance, so it doesn't only work with our products. You know, Guidance is re really exists as a, as a sensor package with an SDK. Now, you mentioned that it's also modular. It looks like something you could attach other things on, other cameras on. You said maybe in more batteries. Uh, what other type of payloads could you put on this? So, I mean, we've designed it to carry multiple payloads in that you can put multiple batteries, of course, Guidance, things like that. And we have come up with ways to mount them. But it's really designed so you can mount anything you'd like. So the most obvious thing is more cameras. So because we have uh, Lightbridge integrated, that means you can mount your own camera. And what people have been most interested in are things like near infrared, infrared, mostly for precision agriculture mm. and other commercial uh, commercial endeavors. Um, but you can plug basically plug any kind of HDMI video signal or analog video signal in. It integrates either into the DJI Pilot app, which is the same app you use to run Inspire and Phantom 3, um, but is also available to the SDK. So your HDMI plugs into onto the board here. That sends it over Lightbridge, getting that same digital signal, relatively low latency, right into the app. You don't have to have separate monitors or anything. Right. Um, now you're also announcing SDKs. Uh, we know there was a Phantom 2 SDK. Some people have created some really interesting apps with that. But for the Inspire and the Phantom 3, uh, what's the SDK situation with those? So the, we're, the Inspire 1 and the Phantom 3 SDK have been in beta uh, for quite some time now. Um, and along with the shipping of the M100, those SDKs will become available, as well as the SDK for the M100. And they're all, they're pretty close to each other. So we, we've seen, and we'll see it here in a minute, but um, porting back and forth seems to be uh, pretty easy. So let's get a quick demo of some of the interesting things you guys have done with the M100 already. All right, sounds good. Cool.
All right, so this is Radley Angelo, Radley of Spark Aerial. You're one of the developers that DJI brought in to experiment with the SDK and the M100. Now, what have you and your team been able to do with it uh, in the Type Emphatic? Yeah, so in just a couple short days, we've actually had uh, a lot of sort of ideas about what we wanted to do with the SDK and this platform. Um, we brought out two different activations today. The first one is the Oculus Rift. Yeah. So with all the new software access that we have, we were able to connect the Oculus, uh, the head tracking movement to the movement of the gimbal on oh. the M100. So let's take the M100 up right now. Mm -hmm. I promise you it's safe. Yeah. Uh, and it has the same uh, camera and gimbal system as the Inspire 1. Eric, you're wearing the Oculus right now. Yeah. And I think you guys can see out there, yeah. you moving around. Because there's such a, a, a wide turning radius mm -hmm. with the, the camera, you're able to look around. So, the idea is that when you're flying, you're able to then control the camera as opposed to using either a transmitter or even the app right. touching the screen right. just with motion control. For so many different people, I mean, like cinematography, instead of having the second radio, you could have somebody just wearing this. For things like inspection, if you wanted to uh, park the aircraft but still be able to move the camera in a very fluid way, um, the Oculus is a perfect fit for that. It really just opens up a whole new world of being able to control you know, the camera and the gimbal movement. And that's, that was the idea. Now, I know you have this working on the M100 now, but because uh, the SDKs are similar. Mm -hmm. Is that something that could also be ported then to the Inspire? Yeah, we've actually tested on the Inspire and it works great. So you can uh, directly connect this stuff with very few changes to actually get it to work on the Inspire mm -hmm. one. Okay, yeah. so what's the second tech demo you have? Right, so the second tech demo is actually the Leap Motion, which is this little box here. And yeah. what, it, what it is, is it's flight control using just your hand um, and the Leap Motion to actually fly the aircraft. So while the Oculus lets you control the camera movement, uh, moving your hand on top of the Leap and sort of imitating an aircraft, you can actually fly the M100. Yeah. So I have a little demo set up for you guys, but essentially, um, if you think of your hand as, as the aircraft, you can pitch it forward, you can tilt it back, you can go higher, you can go lower. So you don't need to do anything with the two stick setup. You can just sort of use your hand as the uh, control interface. And that, that's just an example of something you can do. Exactly. And it's up to people who want to use this commercially to figure out what's going to be best for them, how to right. best integrate camera systems and control systems mm -hmm. yeah. and tap in a SDK. Right. We like the Leap Motion just because it's something that we could just sort of use out of the box. But you could imagine any sensor there or anything that you wanted to interface with as a way of like controlling flight. That was you know, opening up the possibilities is the idea. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. All right, Aaron. Eric, thank you so much for showing us the M100. Um, what's availability going to be like for this in the SDK? Uh, so the M100 will be available everywhere our products are sold. So that would be our, our normal dealers plus online outlets. Uh, and the SDK is available um, by going to dev.dji.com. You do have to apply uh, for SDK access, um, but it's pretty easy to do. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we love flying with you guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye.